Welcome back. We continue live right here on Pittsburgh CW. Bob Pompiani and Gene Collier with you on the Bordis and Bordis Hotline, which is 412-575-2600. We have some tweets in. Gary Rhodes says, well, they have to make sure Jay Hay is fresh for the playoffs. That's why he's not playing tonight. <laughs> That's an interesting one. Thank you, Gary, for that. Um, <laughs> uh, when I look at the situation here with uh, the MVP of the league, we talked about this last night because Giancarlo Stanton, uh, hit his 50th home run last night, 17 in the month of August. Gene, a lot of people have put him in that category of MVP. Now, there is no definite distinction uh, written in the rules for voting here that he has to be a division winner or a playoff caliber team. It just right. says most valuable player. You decide. Is he the most valuable player of this National League season? I don't know, Bob. I think you know my policy on these awards. I don't care who gets them. <laughs> Whoever gets it will have a whole trophy case full of stuff already. And who gets the next big trophy does not really interest me. But that said, if I, when I win or if I have a, hall, a uh, MVP vote, I vote for the person I think is the best player in the league. Is he? Regardless of what. I, see, I don't think he's the best player in the league. Okay. Who do you think? Who is the best player I in the league? I think it's Paul Goldschmidt. I think he does a lot really? defensively at first. I think Nolan Arenado can make a claim also. He's the best defensive third baseman, one of them, and he always drives in 135 to 145 runs a year. I don't know how much better you can be. Okay, I'll go with that. Nolan Arenado, that's it. All right, let us know what you think if you want to have a vote here. All right, let's go to the lines. We'll begin with uh, Bill in Oil City on line one. What's up, Bill? How you doing? Uh, I've got a couple of things here that I wonder. Who called the play... Uh, whenever they uh, had to pass on the one-yard line at the tour, at the end of the game with Landry Jones, uh, that had to be Todd Haley, and I don't, I still don't, I never heard really why because it looked, it was a bad throw. There's no question, but th there could have been something to that, in that there were two receivers almost in the same exact place, and normally you don't see that. And when that happens, it normally is some miscommunication. You got young guys in there. What did you think of that play? Again, what difference does it make? <laughs> I mean, I understand the objection. It's easy to run the ball in from there, but it's also the preseason. People are working on things, trying to get, you know, trying to get their systems down. The Steelers are in a situation where they move the offensive coordinator upstairs. Randy Fickner moves downstairs. So the things are in flux, and they're trying things out. It's August. Why are, why are people getting upset about this play? It's a talk show, and that's what they want to talk about. I see. About, okay. So. Well, anyway, I thought it was right. a bad throw, but I also think it probably could have been on the receivers and communication there. Whatever. It really doesn't matter, like you're right. Brad in Punxsutawney. What's up, Brad? How you doing? Hey, real good, thanks. First good. off, uh, thoughts and prayers out to the people in Houston in that area. Sure. Um, put things into perspective a little bit when we're calling in about sports. Thank you. Um, after that, um, just a, a quick comment on the Pirates. You know, the one thing is, if you're going to be frugal, and I'll use the word frugal in, in their You can use decision, cheap if you want. Um you, you, you spend $5 million on Sean Rodriguez to bring him back. Um, that $5 million you could put towards a big bopper, a starting pitcher, um, somebody that, that's going to play in the lineup every single day. Um, or, I have nothing against Sean Rodriguez, but at $5 million a year, Maybe you could put that to, you know, somebody that's going to be a difference maker, not a reserve. I have no problem with them bringing him back and paying him $5 million or more. I don't because he's a guy who, can, over the course of 162, plays a lot. They should do something in addition to that, and it would have helped by not giving Daniel Hudson $11 million. And looking back now, the Cervelli deal looks like it was a little bit too aggressive for a guy who is injury prone. Now, Neil Huntington admitted he's injury prone, but they got $22 million over the next two years still sunk into him. So... What do you do? Well, that's what, that's what <clears throat> the Pirates always like to say in their defense. It's not how much money you spend, it's how you spend it. Well, you know, you're not doing great on that count either. All right, let's go out to line three. That's John and Green Tree. Hey, right here. What's thanks up, for John? taking my call, guy. How you doing? What's up, John? What's up, man? Uh, the Pirates ain't going nowhere. Uh, they, they, they keep on losing their games uh, um, and all that's that. Great. And uh, and just, just tell them that they ain't going nowhere. And, and I hate to see the Pirates lose. Thank you. That's scintillating analysis right there, Gene. Well, you know, I, I appreciate that because, you know, a lot of times we talk on this show about, you know, the Pirates' next 10 games, their next 30 games against uh, divisional opponents, how many they have against divisional opponents, you know, what they're going to do in this stretch, that stretch. None of it matters 
because, as the caller just pointed out, they don't win games. It doesn't matter who they're no, playing. They don't, and that's <laughs> been the overwhelming thing. They just don't win they games. They don't win enough games. And they're kicking the ball around tonight in a very important game, one that does not have Josh Harrison in the starting lineup, which makes no sense to me. Let's go to Jim in Cannonsburg. Or, I'm sorry, it's Connellsville. What's up, Jim? How you doing? Hey, Bob. What's up, Hey, Jim? I wanted to say uh, I just love how Bob Nutting and Neil Huntington thought – Oh, if we get rid of Pedro, we're, we're never going to have any errors. Well, guess what? Wrong. I bet you they committed more errors this season than what they did when they had their best player, Pedro. He was the only guy that could ever do anything. He, he brought postseason baseball to this, this club. he done a lot of things in the postseason that McCutcheon couldn't do. It was wrong that they got rid of him. I feel bad about it. They need to bring him back. And also, one other thing, go Nuttings Wallet. He's pretty upset, can you tell? Yeah, he is. Speaking of Pedro, by the way, did you see Michael McHenry, the Ford, had to come in and pitch a game the other night? And yeah. they were getting waxed. And one of the batters he faced was Pedro Alvarez, who had a home run off of him. Oh, my. Is, that in the, <laughs> is he in the Orioles minor league system? Minor league system, yeah. Yeah, I, I agree. I mean, I, I don't think they should have given up on Pedro quite as fast as they did. Uh, but he hasn't ac uh, acquitted himself very well with Baltimore, that's for sure. One more before we go to the break, and that would be Randy in Beaver Falls. What's up, Randy? How you doing? How you doing, Bob and Gene? Hey. Good, thanks. I got two quick questions. Uh, if the Steelers got a good shot of going to the Super Bowl and winning, winning it. If, uh, if they do, you think Big Ben, Big ben will retire? And uh, that Niall Davis kid, he looks pretty darn good. First of all, they have a shot to get to the Super Bowl, yes. Um, I, I think they're as good as any team out there, maybe short of New England. But if they play New England here, I think it could be a different result. Uh, so to do that, they've got to win every game they're supposed to win and beat New England head-to-head, -head, and that will maybe help them. But I don't think Ben's retiring, do you? I don't. Uh, he keeps talking that way. Uh, and I'm not saying it's not on his mind. And certainly not that, I'm certainly not saying it shouldn't be on his mind. Uh, but I'd be very surprised if this were his last year. We're due for a break. It's now 6-1 to one Chicago. They have the lead in the bottom of the eighth inning, so it's going to be an eight-game deficit. And the season, if it wasn't over, will be over when this series is over. We'll take a break, come back with more right here live on Pittsburgh CW.